place we're going to start for Kyria Draxus is, of course, on all her black armor. Now, the color we're going to use is Pterodon Turquoise, uh, and this is going to establish our kind of shiny, dark, clean black armor, but it's also going to give us our first highlight. So we just want to take this Pterodon Turquoise and start painting it on all of these armor panels taking it very steadily as we do it. So we just want to kind of do it a panel at a time. Much like this. I'm just kind of trying to use as few brush strokes as possible and always kind of go from recess to recess if you can, if it does exist. So for example, on here, we can actually start up here by a gorget and just bring it down so we can start there, and pull it down like this. So we're just going to keep going, adding this pterodon turquoise all over the black armor details. And then we'll come back. Once all that pterodon turquoise is dry, we're going to take some black Templar and coat it all over these armor panels. But what we're going to try and do is leave some of those edges still showing through. So what we do is we take the black Templar on our brush, and I'll demonstrate this here, is we using this black templar we kind of just make contact with the model on the panel like this and then just pull it round like that just avoiding adding any of this black templar over those edges so that way it establishes our first highlight for us. So if I do the same thing again on the panel underneath, you'll see what I mean. So we make contact with the model here. Pull it down. Contact there. And pull it round. So as you can see, we've got this nice kind of pterodon turquoisey highlight still shining through whilst also having a kind of sleek back black surface and once that black templar is dry we're going to use a spot of finned down finrisian gray just to add our spot the highlight to all of these armor panels so that the kind of bluey gray blends into the pterodon turquoise highlight that we've left You can also use this Fenrisian Grey just to re-strengthen any highlights that you might have got too much Black Templar over. And once that's dry, we're going to create a roughly 6 to 1 mix of Ultramarines Blue and Contrast Medium. I'm going to use this as a glaze all over all of those armor panels just to blend the black, the turquoise, and the Fenrisian Grey together. Once that Ultramarine's Blue Contrast Medium mix is dry, we're going to work on some other details. And the thing we're going to work on next is the cape. And so the colour we're going to be using for the exterior of the cape is Shayish Purple. Now, this cape really lends itself to the contrast technique because there's so many recesses in it. Uh, and what we want to do is we effectively want to start at the top here and pull them down in brush strokes, in one big brush stroke. So we start up here, it doesn't matter if we get some on the skull, and we just pull that shayish purple down. Like that. And so we keep going around in this manner. Once all that shyish purple is dry, we're going to use some thinned down Zerius purple just to add a little bit of a highlight. So we want to use this just to establish a nice strong colour for all the raised areas on the cloak. And next up we want to use some thinned down Jean Steeler purple just to apply the highlight to all of the edges.
And next up, we're going to work on the inside of the cloak. And for this, we're going to create a roughly seven to one mix of contrast medium and agaros dunes. And the reason we've done this is because we want it to be a nice soft cream. And we want it to go on nice and smoothly. Like this. And we just want to get this mix all over. The cape and you can see it's a really subtle effect. So we are going to add a little bit of shade in the darkest recess, darkest recesses, but we just want to establish this as our kind of as our, as our, as our main tone this kind of mixture. The reason we're not using Skeleton Horde is because Skeleton Horde is a lot thinner than Agaros Dune, so it can't, whilst it does work when you give it contrast medium, it doesn't kind of stand up to too much medium, otherwise it just becomes like sort of a weird brown water, um, which we don't want. Whereas Agaros Dune just has a little bit more color strength. And once that's dry, we're going to take a small amount of Skeleton Horde and we're going to just apply this to the recesses, almost like a recess shade, like this. And then lastly, we want to use a tiny bit of Screaming Skull, just as a highlight. all the raised edges on the cape. With the cape done, the next thing we're going to work on is the skull on her shoulder pad. So the colour we're going to use for this is now, of course, Skeleton Horde. And we want to paint this all over, excluding the teeth, because they are going to be a slightly different colour. And so we just add this Skeleton Horde all over. And you can see one of the reasons why we didn't use Skeleton Horde on the cape, only because when you thin it down, it gets really, really watery, but also you don't really want the skeleton, you don't really want the whore, uh, the helmet. Ugh, what am I trying to say? We don't really want the skull to be the same colour as the cape. We want the cape to be a lot softer than the skull. So that's why we didn't do them both with the same colour. And with that skeleton horde applied, we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to paint in the fangs. And once that wildwood is dry, we're going to use some Screaming Skull just to highlight both the bone parts like this, just picking out all of the raised edges. We're just going to use it just to run a small highlight. down the centre of each of these fangs. And with that done, I've applied the same process to the purity seal hanging from the gun. Um, but what we're going to do, rather than finish off the gun, is we're actually going to paint in all the silver details. And for this, we're going to be using some thinned down iron warriors. So we just want to pick out all of these metal bits. Things like the grenade here, and these under plates on the black armor that we've already, that we've left. Just want to be very careful whilst we do these bits. So we don't want to get the silver all over our lovely black armor that we've already painted. And once all that silver's dry, we're going to paint in all the gold details using some thinned down retributor armor. And if this includes any of the skulls that are scattered around the miniatures. So there's one here on the belt and there's one on the grenade. There's also this inquisitorial eye on the chest plate.
And then there's all of the details on the gun, as well as this inquisitorial eye under here, I should mention. Once all that gold is dry, we're going to give all of those metallics a shade of basilicanum grey. You'll notice that I'm just leaving the gold details. So you want to shade them with a slightly different color. And next up, we want to give all those gold details a shade of Agaros dunes. And next up, we want to create a roughly three to one mix of Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium. And we want to use this to paint all over the gun. And the reason we've done this is because we don't want a really strong Basilicanum Grey colour. We just want a very subtle grey finish. All over the weapon casing. like this. And next up, we want to use some Griff Charger Grey just to colour in that middle armour piece just up here. And again, we don't want to use very much as we do this. And next up, we want to use some Volupus Pink, and this is just for the little purity wax seal, just here. And next up, we want to use some Eandon Yellow, and this is going to be for the two cables that we haven't already painted in, so the smooth cables. One is just here, and the other is on her backpack. And once that Yandan yellow is dry, we're going to use a little bit of back temper just to paint some hazard stripes on the cable. So we just want to basically just pick an area to start and just start drawing these little black stripes at roughly even intervals. like this. And with that done, we're now going to start applying some highlights. So the colour we're going to use first is Ulthu and Grey. And this is for this armour piece up here that we that we did with the Griff Charger Grey. So we just want to apply a, an edge highlight like this. Across all the edges on that piece of armour, but also for the gun casing itself. So we just want to, it's very subtle. Edge highlight like this. And next up, we're going to highlight all those silver details with some thinned down iron hand steel. And next up, we want to give all of that gold detail a highlight of Liberator Gold. And with that done, we're now going to move on. So the last two things to do are Shang and Draxus's face. 
Uh, and we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do the face and then we'll do the whole of Shang by himself. I think he's called Shang. Don't quote me on it. Let's call him the dragon Pokemon. Um, so for the face, what we're going to use is we're going to use Fire Slayer Flesh. And what we want to do is we want to be really quick here because we don't want any streaks on the top of the head. So we want to turn the model around like this. And using the Fire Slayer Flesh, we want to basically start at the base of the chin and then just pull it all the way over and then quickly go underneath and get the uh, back of the head as well. So using the Fire Slayer Flesh, we take it on our brush. Not that much. And we're just going to start down here at the base of the chin, pull it up over the head, round, picking it back up where we finished and smoothing it out. And that way we don't get any of those kinds of lines that you can get sometimes. Now don't worry if it's a bit built up in the eyes because we can just smooth that back out. We're just concentrating on making sure we get a nice smooth finish on the top of the head first. Once that fire slayer flesh is dry we're going to use some Kislev flesh to apply some highlights. So we just want to take our Kislev flesh, start painting it all over the prominent details of the face. So like the brow, Bridge of the nose, the cheekbones. And once that kid's left flesh is dry, we're going to use a small amount of flayed one flesh just to add a spot highlight to some of those details. And next up, we're going to use a dot of screaming skull for the eye. And the last thing we're going to do is add a tiny amount of black templar for the pupil. And with that, Draxus is done. So now we need to work on her dragon. Now the two colours we're going to use are Pterodon Turquoise and Dark Angels Green. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to do Pterodon Turquoise all over the backs of the wings. And then we're going to pull it down to around about this kind of halfway point. And then we're going to use Dark Angels Green to kind of blend the two together. So we're going to start with the Pterodon Turquoise. And we'll use a slightly bigger brush for this bit. So we take the Pterodon Turquoise. And then all over the wing, the back of the wing I should say, you just start painting this Pterodon Turquoise all over. There we go. Then we give our brush a quick wash. And then we grab some Dark Angels Green. And then we start blending the two colours together. like this. And the next up, we want to take some Militarum Green. We want to paint this all over the spines. And 
Once all of that is dry, what we want to do on the wings is we want to kind of blend them right down. So we're going to take some Black Templar and what we're going to do is we're going to paint the Black Templar pretty much all over the wing like this. more black templar and then whilst that black templar is drying we give the brush a quick wash and then we take some pterodon turquoise and we just want to kind of add it in almost in a stippling motion just around certain areas of the wing itself, like this, to kind of create this sort of black turquoisey type effect. Take a bit more turn on turquoise, do a bit more stippling. Like that, so you should have this kind of nice kind of fading, swirling pattern that almost kind of looks like the pterodon turquoise is shining through underneath the black. Like that. So we want to do the same thing again on the other wing, and then we'll come back. Next up, we want to take some Sotec Green and apply some highlights to all of the turquoisey areas, both on the body and on the wing. So we just want to, we want these to kind of look like raised muscles so you just want to kind of always do this in like lines going in the same direction kind of like this similarly for the wings all you want to do is you want to across the wing paint these tiny little lines going across the top like that don't worry if it looks a bit weird because we are going to smooth it out with a with a glaze but It'll all make sense soon. And next up we want to use some Lauren Forest for all the green parts. And similarly once again we're going to use some Strachan Green to add a little bit of a spot highlight to all these green areas. With all those highlights applied, we're going to add some Skeleton Horde to the interior of the wing. Like this. And then next up, what we're going to do just to finish off that those spines on the wing is we're going to take some Achillean green and we're just going to brush this all over where we've added that Sotec green like this. And next up, we're going to use some Black Templar for the claws and for the beak. And 
And next up, we want to use a tiny little bit of Volupis pink just for his little tongue hanging out here. And next up, we just want to use a little bit of Phalanx yellow to add a dot for his eyes. And as you can see, I've finished off the base and now Inquisitor Lord Kyriodraxus is all finished. If you'd like to see how I did the base, you can check out the Ephrael Stern video or the How to Paint Araman. Thank you so much for watching this video. She was great fun to paint. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I love it whenever you do and I'll see you in the next one.